Well, welcome back to Living Local. At least 400,000 Americans are diagnosed with Lyme disease every year. The tick-borne illness can cause a host of serious medical problems, which is why being vigilant about prevention is so important as tick season ramps up. Joining us via Zoom today is Lyme disease survivor and author of The Lyme Disease Cure, Dr. Cass Ingram. Dr. Ingram, thank you so much for speaking to us. My pleasure to be here. All right, let's start I'm here first. I'm still alive. I'm not in a wheelchair anymore. Oh, that is excellent. Yeah, and we're, we are looking forward to hearing more about that. Let's start first here, uh, Dr. Ingram. What is happening in the body when someone has Lyme disease? Well, it's a nasty thing because you're dealing with the spirochete, and he is a corkscrew pathogen. If, if the tick bites you, and, and that one, and the Babesia, other pathogens, but particularly that Lyme bacteria just digs into the skin and the joints and the bone, spinal cord, heart even, and heart, kidneys, causes all sorts of pathology. In fact, I don't think half a million get it. It looks like about four million a year right now. Okay, wow, so even more. And so when the pathogen gets in your body, you said it can spread to, I mean, various different uh, systems. Well, you, you, a lot of times you have that. Somebody comes in with a bum knee, then their ankle goes out, their elbow. So it, it's a migrating pathogen. Uh, they can develop cardiac symptoms like bundled branch block. It's frightening, huh? That the spirochete could be in there eating away at you. And some lupus, some scleroderma. It's, uh, it's a big mimic. Then it can go into the brain, MS and Lou Gehrig's. They, they analyze, analysis of biopsy. Nine out of 10 with MS and Alzheimer's had the Lyme germ in their brains. Wow. That's not good. Wow. So, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So now, so you're saying basically there are, there are various ways that Lyme, can de Lyme can disease can, um, can manifest itself in, in, in your body and affect you. It's just not any good to get it. We've got to do more prevention. We can talk about, the book talks about a lot about treatment because I went through it and I found the herbs and the natural that cleaned it out, but a lot about prevention too. Okay, yeah, let's get into that. First, let's start here. How do ticks spread Lyme disease, first of all, Dr. Ingram? Well, they spread by this little nymph, usually, that you can't see, the size of a poppy seed, and it's a baby, so it will bite you, and uh, it shoots the germs through its salivary and its whole gut system, it, and it could shoot bacteria, parasites, viruses into the tissues. Then they grow in your body. It's that it's simple. So it's not just the, okay, so it's not adult ticks. I guess that's something I've always thought. It's the adult ticks, not the, the nymphs. The adult, okay. I'd much rather have some adult ticks on me than these little teeny nymphs. They're the ones that are extremely pathological and dangerous. Okay. And they can get on the dogs, the cats, and they come out in the spring and the early summer. Too tiny to see. All right, that's good to know. So how can, how can people prevent exposure to the, the these tick is, nymphs? is to do my protocol. You, you put your socks over your pant leg and you wear light colored clothes, a broad brimmed hat, long sleeves, no more shorts, forget it, you can't do it unless you're constantly inspecting yourself. But one thing is this spray. I use this, I actually helped invent the formula. So I use this spray and boom, 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 boom. It's all essential oils, 99, it seems to be 99% effective, geranium, cumin, juniper, oregano, clove, but all kinds of different things. And uh, so I, I shoot this on myself from now on this Protect-X. I get big results with the cats, the dogs. The dog, you shoot the shoulder, between the shoulder blade and the underbelly. Human being, toddlers even. We can, this is edible. All right, that's, so that's uh, one thing. Good, yeah, that's good to hear because you always worry and about some of these. The other one is you take a lot of spices. If you eat a lot of garlic and onion and you use the oil of oregano, so let's say we did that, and we put some of those drops twice a day under the tongue, the wild stuff, and, uh, and just did that every day. You're less vulnerable. They don't like this spicy stuff in your blood. That's good to know. Now, it, Dr. Ingram, okay, prevention obviously is the best course of action, but if you are bitten by a tick, um, what should you do then? How should you respond? You have your antibiotics. It was too late for me to get them. But besides them, you have nothing. So let's say you're in the nothing category. That means you get into the book and the basic protocol. So if you get the Lyme disease book and go through it, fine. Or you can go on my website 
and get the protocol. It's going to be the oil of wild oregano, the super strength. It's going to be something called oregano rest. It's all in there, the oregano juice. There's four or five things that we found in other herbs. Cat's claw is good. You've heard that uh, teasel root is good. There's, it's just herbs that seem to help sage uh, clean out the problem. And it may take time. It may take six months or a year to, for you to get back on your feet. This is no easy potato. Can you walk us through um, what exactly happened in your case with, with your case of Lyme disease and how you treated it? What happens? Yes. Is the corkscrew, you, and I mean, it could be some other germ, but the, mostly the corkscrew germ has an attachment, the spirochete. It'll attach to your cells, your bone, your cartilage, and it'll, it'll screw its way into the tissues. It's not worth getting. Once that screws its way into the bone and the cartilage, into the skin, the heart, the, the brain, it's very difficult to get out. It'll go into different forms. Uh, it's like a biological agent. You, you know, you're, it's not, your immune system cannot handle this thing. So that causes inflammation. That's where you get the joint because the germ is in there and it's multiplying over and over again, billions of them in the brain. I had one guy who had an autopsy. It was a big football player. He died of Lou Gehrig's. He had the highest amount of Lyme bacteria in the brain of anyone in the world. And he was a very famous guy, I won't give him the name, but they called me in on it at the last hour. Uh, it's, it's just not good. It's an yeah, important thing to avoid if possible. And uh, if you do have and to deal with- And you get posted that's Lyme. 70% or so happens 100 yards in, a, in your home, right around your house. You don't have to go hiking in New York to get it. Important to know, yeah, you don't need to be out in the woods in some deep sort of uh, wilderness area. Dr. Uh, Cass Ingram, author of The Lyme Disease Cure, thank you so much for joining us today, sir, with that important information. We knocked them around, so check around, get that spray, and protect yourself, and follow my advice. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, if you would like more information on The Lyme Disease Cure, that's Dr. Ingram's book, and uh, any of his other books, head to that website on your street screen, CassIngram.com. We'll also have those details posted on our website, too. That's OurQuadCities.com.